Hi there, welcome to video number five of the Pattern Fundamentals series. This is the last video in this series, so I hope you've been following along and you've learned a few things along the way. I'm Alexandra Morgan, founder of In-House Patterns and instructor at In-House Pattern Studio. I teach experienced sewers and budding pattern makers how to make and adjust patterns for fit and style. Up to this point, you will have practiced two essential skills for pattern design. Learned how to rotate darts and manage their volume, create flair through the dart transfer method, and balanced a skirt pattern. All of this in just a few weeks. So congratulations to all of you who actually practiced the pattern work. You've gained the fundamental skills that you'll be using over and over again. Today, I'm finishing off the series with the sleeve block. I'm going to show you how to create one of the most popular sleeve styles this year. That style is the trumpet sleeve. So grab your scaled sleeve block pattern from the free download I created and let's get to it. First of all, I want to show you what a trumpet sleeve looks like. So I've created a Pinterest board to show you some examples. You'll find a link to this board below. As you can see here, there are many variations of this sleeve shape, but the common silhouette is a fitted upper sleeve with a flared bottom hem. Now before you start any pattern design project, it's important to sketch out the style you want to create. This serves as a visual reference of the silhouette, the placement of the seam lines, and a clue to the amount of functional and design ease you'll need to include in your pattern. So here's the sketch for the pattern we're going to create today. You'll notice that it's a full length sleeve with a fitted upper sleeve. It has a seam slightly above the elbow and flares out quite dramatically at the hemline. With these features in mind, we can now move on to the pattern work. Here we have our sleeve block pattern, and as you've probably already become accustomed to, I've created some slash lines. These slash lines are going to help us create the trumpet sleeve design. The first slash line I have here is an indication of where I want the sleeve seam to be. So in other words, when we go back to the original sketch here, you're going to see there's a seam here. And I know that it's above the elbow line because the sketch shows me her elbow is down here. So what I've decided to do is position the sleeve seam about one inch above the elbow. So this is the first slash line that I've drawn in. So it's one inch above the elbow line. The next thing I'm going to do is divide this lower section of the sleeve into four equal sections. And I'm going to do that by basically just measuring the length of that seam line, so that very first line we created, and dividing it by four. And this is how I'm going to get four equal sections along the seam line that's above the elbow. I'm going to do exactly the same process at the wrist line here and I'm going to take this measurement and divide it into four sections. And when, once you have that you can then just join your cross marks to create your slash lines. And the third slash line here of course is just going down the center of the sleeve. Now I have one more little piece of information that I've added to this particular pattern and it is this single notch here on the front side of the sleeve. And this is just going to help us join our upper sleeve and our lower sleeve when we're finished our pattern work. So I've just created a little cross mark along the seam line and created a T notch on either side. So when I cut these two pieces apart, I know exactly where they're going to join up again. So the next thing we're going to do after we've created our slash lines is we're going to separate our upper and lower sleeve and we're going to create our cut through our slash lines up from the sleeve hem all the way up to the seam line here. Okay, so now we've slashed through all of those slash lines and I can separate my upper and lower sleeve and I can also spread my pattern sections here on the lower sleeve, which is what is going to create the flare in the bottom part of the sleeve. So going back to the sketch here, I'm going to look at how much flare do I think that I have. And this of course is just um, comes from experience and you'll realize how much you need to add the more you work with patterns. But until then, we are going to use um, a pattern spread of about three inches per slash line in order to get our flare. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to set the upper sleeve aside because we are basically done with that pattern work. 
And I'm going to um, start manipulating this lower part of the sleeve in order to create the flare. So I'm just going to secure it in place in one section here to help us with this process. So once you have your slash lines created, all you're going to do is open them up. So as I said, we're going to do it about three inches. So I'm going to start with this middle section first, just simply because I like to um, create a little bit of a balanced uh, pattern as I'm working with it. So I'm going to spread those sections by three inches. So just working with it until you get that three inch gap at the perimeter of the pattern here. And then just secure it in place. Now I want to spread this section by three inches as well. So I'm going to again use my scaled ruler and just tilt out that section of the pattern so it meets at three inches on the scaled ruler. And I'll secure that one in place. And then of course I'm going to do it on this side as well. So measuring out my three inches so that I have an even flare all along the hemline. Now we're not quite done yet because you're going to notice here that there's a little bit of a slant here. And just like the skirt, we want to add flare to the underarm seams of this particular sleeve flare. So once again, we're going to take the measurement of the flare. So you'll remember we've got three inches on each of those. I'm going to be adding one and a half inches on each side for some flare at the underarm seam of this sleeve. So on each side, just measuring out that one and a half inches. When I have those cross marks there, I can just join that cross mark with my original seam line position here at the underarm seam. Now what's important here now is I want to make sure that the seam line length that I've created here is going to be the same as the seam line length I've created here. So I'm just going to measure that and make a cross mark here so I know exactly how long those lines are and I know that they're going to sew together um, very accurately. And once I've got those cross marks I'm going to make sure that I have a 90 degree angle here. So I'm going to put the edge of my ruler against that underarm seam line that I just created and give myself a 90 degree angle on either side. And once you have that drawn in, you're just going to fill in these gaps. Now you do want to make sure that they are a nice smooth line. So if you need to go back with a curved ruler or um, just your straight edge ruler is filling in that gap, then by all means you can do that. You definitely want to have a 90 degree angle here and a 90 degree angle here. You also want to see for a certain distance that you have a 90 degree angle here and one here as well. You're also going to need to blend this seam line because you'll see that it's got a few corners here where your pivot points were. So that's again just a matter of smoothing them out. This is called blending when you smooth out seam lines like this. So just creating nice smooth curves all the way around your pattern and 90 degree angles where they need to be. So here we have the finished patterns, but we do need to make one more indication here, and that is the grain line of this lower piece. So most of you already know that the center line of the sleeve, which is perpendicular to the bicep line, is your grain line. So your center sleeve is always the grain line on your upper sleeve. So you can just indicate that with some arrows if you'd like. Now the lower part of the sleeve, we can use the center of this flared portion of the sleeve as well for the grain line. So in order to find the center again, you're just going to find the midpoint of that flare and redraw the center part of your lower part of your sleeve here. This is going to be the grain line for the lower part of your sleeve. And there you have your pattern for the trumpet sleeve. I want to thank you so much for showing your interest and enthusiasm in this series. Whether you're developing your own patterns 
or just want to adjust commercial patterns for fit, building your pattern making skills is the key. Once you understand how patterns work, you can shed any fear you have of manipulating them for your personal fit and style. If you're interested in building your own made to measure and custom fit pattern blocks, I currently have two online courses covering stretch knit pattern making, where you will get individual support from me as you draft, fit, and refine your personal blocks. Follow the links to learn more about my custom stretch knit pattern making courses. For more information about online or in-person learning, you can contact me using the link below this video. I definitely have so much more to share about pattern making and fit. So if you haven't done so already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and join my email list. You'll get fresh insight and practical solutions to all your pattern making and fitting questions. Thanks for watching. I'll chat with you soon. Bye for now.